this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and tonight we're here at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Parks with Lynn Sheen, author of The Last Time I Saw Paris. Welcome to Author. Thank you so much. So, Lynn, I know that this is your first published novel, but I know that you didn't just begin writing the day you decided to write this novel, that <laughs> your relationship with writing goes back many years, doesn't it? It does. Uh, I loved stories ever since I was very small. Uh, my parents were really big readers, and my grandfather was actually a poet. Oh. So I, there was just words were a part of, of my life. And um, at first I thought I wanted to be a screenwriter, and I studied that in college originally, and I wrote a number of screenplays and, uh, uh, in the following years. And I, but what I realized is that screenwriting wasn't the best format for me because I love description. I love setting a scene and expressing the emotion and just really catching a, sort of the sensory experience. And of course, in screenplays, that's not your job. <laughs> No. You know, that's a set designer, that's a director, and that's really not something they, they need. So it took a while for me to find my, no my format as novelist, but um, once I found it, I knew I was, I was home. You must have been drawn to the screenplay because of just your love of story, because you have yes. to love that to be a Oh, screenwriter. absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, like I said, I grew up you know, with stories and telling stories and listening to stories and and that was a huge part of my life and um, I'm not sure why uh, it seemed like writing stories for movie would be a good way to start but uh, that was the direction I went at first and certainly I learned a lot about structure in, in storytelling and I still do use that same overall structure that I learned then it's just that I, I have a great time painting in a lot more of a, of a richer picture than I than I got to before. So let's talk about um, the last time I saw Paris. This had a it began with a brooch, did it not? It did. In fact, it's the brooch I'm wearing I right now. I was wondering if that was it. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I've loved Paris for many years. I've always been drawn to the 30s and 40s. Um, the culture, the music, the movies, the the clothes, and particularly the jewelry. I love Art Deco jewelry. And uh, I wasn't until I discovered it was this brooch, and it's a French Art Deco brooch. And for some reason, that um, was the first time I'd really put together Paris and the 30s and 40s. And I was curious as to kind of what was going on at that time. And that's, I, I mean, I, I knew a bit about the occupation, but I didn't really know much. So that's when I started digging. And what I found was so captivating. Um, it was the Paris that I'd, I'd loved all these years with the Eiffel Tower, with the, the Louvre and the Tuileries and the places that um, people love to visit when they're there. But during the German occupation, life itself was a daily struggle. Challenging, obviously, for the people at the time, but as a writer to, to um, kind of fall into that um, experience as I did was just really very enlightening. So this is your first novel. Yes. Which you, was the first novel you'd written? Yes. Okay, so great, and you get it published. <laughs> so what was the biggest surprise for you once you actually started writing it and were going to actually finish it? Well, uh, hmm, that's, that's a good question. Uh, it, I spent several years working on it, and uh, it, it was... Um, it was certainly a learning experience. I mean, coming from a screenwriting background, there were certain elements of it I was very comfortable with as right. far as the structure, but, but there was, uh, particularly early on, I, you know, there was some craft to learn about it. And I, I worked at UCLA Writers Program. They have a, oh, a really nice program there, and I worked with the instructors there, and it was really helpful. But um, I guess it, it was interesting because as much as it is a solitary experience, I mean, it's all about sitting in the chair and writing every day, no matter what. But it really was, it, it was a lot of the people I met along the way, you know, getting um, crit a critique partner that was just really understood my vision and was, you know, I mean, all of that just really was a really great experience. And, and as solitary as writing uh, is, I mean, there's so much of a community for it. and. Yeah. And once you get sucked into that community, you know, it's just an amazing group of people. And I think maybe that was one of the, the things I really didn't expect. Yeah. Did you ever reach a point, say the middle, where you said, this thing is never going to come together? 
There's no way. Or did you feel pretty <laughs> confident from the get-go that you were going to be able to bring it all together? I was determined, no matter what, I was going to finish the book. I was, nothing was going to keep me from that. Nothing at all. But what, what was, it wasn't funny at the time, it's funny looking back, is there were a number of times I thought I was done. You know, I, I, oh. I, I made it through the first draft and I felt so happy. I, I, I typed in the end and I just felt so excited. And then I went back and I started rereading what I'd written months ago. And I'm like, okay, this needs another rewrite. Well, it's good that you knew how to do that, though, that you were able to be honest with yourself at least. Well, Others might have just sent it in. I, I, I suppose that's true. But I, I, they do, I wrote me. it, <laughs> yes. I, I rewrote it probably two or three more times. And, uh, and then I gave it to some cold readers and got their input and rewrote it again. And so there were a number of times where I thought, okay, I've spent enough time on this book. I'm done. And then I would realize, no, it's not, it's not done yet. So, so I think that, that really did help me when I finally reached the point where I started sending it out. But it was, there were a number of times I just thought, gosh, this is never going to be done. It's going to be rewritten again and again and again. They can feel like that sometimes. Now, I want you to finish this sentence for me. If, if writing has taught me nothing, it has taught me... Diligence. Diligence. Why? How? <laughs> it is t writing taught me diligence because uh, in order to do it, you have to keep writing even when you don't feel like it, even when the story's not cooperating, even when the characters are not talking to you, even when you are sure that no one will ever want to read another word that you've written because, because not writing is, is actually worse. <laughs>